Hi, my name is Darren White. I've been an astro and landscape photographer for over 25 years. I've been helping teach and lead workshops for the last 10 years, and I've been a Sigma ambassador now for about three years. Um, while we're all living inside in these crazy times, I would like to give you some tips on how to remove the noise from your night photography images. Um, one of the things that I've been specializing in over the last five years is how to get big prints from night photography images with little to no noise. And I have three tips today that I'm gonna share with you. One is the pin light blending mode, which removes the white noise in your shadow areas from single exposures. Um, dust and scratches is gonna remove the confetti light colored noise that you find in long exposures from 30 minutes up to an hour long. And then the third way is gonna be through stacking and how to combine images to reduce noise in the overall image. So those are the three things that I'm gonna show you in Photoshop today, so let's get to it. All right, here we are. Let's jump right into Photoshop. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys is how to remove white noise in your shadows from single exposures at night. And where this white noise comes from is, it usually shows up right here in the darker areas. If I go over here to the lighter areas, you just don't see it. For whatever reason, it shows up in the darker areas and I wanna show you how to remove that. There's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can sit here with the clone tool or the healing brush and go through and do each one. But I found a different way that works really good. So let's get to it. First, I'm gonna go up and create a duplicate layer. And I'll show you why you wanna create a duplicate layer in just a minute. And then you wanna to go to filter, noise, median, And you'll see, the, you'll see the white dots disappear. Now they're already gone. Now my median is set to three, but watch, I'm gonna click preview. And you also lose a little bit of detail with this, but the idea is to bring the, the detail up without, without the noise. So the noise is gone, I'm gonna click okay. And then here's the secret come over here to your blending mode and choose pin light. So now we've retained the detail in the rocks up in this area and back in this area, but the noise is gone. So here's before and here's after. And for some people, you might not think that that's a huge issue, but when you're printing big, these white, sh white dots will show up in your prints and Really, you don't want your eye to focus on the, the bad parts of the image. You want people to see and focus on the good parts of the image. So it's just a simple, easy little trick. On and off, show you, there's with it, there's without the noise. But why do we create a duplicate layer? Here's why. Sometimes, if we look at the sky here, you can see that some of the stars are dimming when I apply the pin light blending mode. And ideally that's not what we want. So the, the technique sometimes you, sometimes it thinks that the stars are the noise. So what we'll do to bring those stars back is simply put a mask on it and paint with a black brush. And I have my brush fairly large because I'm, it's a big area. And then I just, come over here and I just paint all around. You don't have to worry about going over the arch because there's no effect on the arch as far as noise removal from the method that we used. So let's do a little bit of thinking here. And by putting the mask on it, it just allows us a really easy way to bring back those stars so that they're not dim. Okay, so now we have our stars have been brought back. The noise in this foreground is gone. And so with that, then I would start working on and editing this image, uh, color, contrast, things like that. So that's how we use the pin light blending mode to remove white noise in the shadow areas from high ISO images. 
All right, so what I'm gonna show you guys next is how to remove confetti noise from a super long exposure um, shot at night. I generally shoot these super long exposures so that we get excellent detail in our foreground in the rocks here without, um, without a lot of noise. But what happens is with some cameras, your camera will produce what's called confetti noise and it's all these different colored um, pixels that don't render properly. Um, some of them are caused by heat, some of them are caused by just uh, not recording the data properly. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to remove these. It's super simple, super easy, and I want to make sure that you don't spend a lot of time using the uh, clone tool or the healing brush to try to go in and remove all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate layer of my long exposure. And then I'm gonna come up here to filter, and noise, filter, noise, dust and scratches. And you can see already that the noise has went away. Now I've found that the best numbers for my images are four and 22. This was shot with a Nikon D810 and a Sigma 20 millimeter lens. And I found that four and 22 are the numbers that work best. Everybody that has a different camera is probably gonna to have to play around with these numbers a little bit. But the idea is to remove the noise and keep the detail. So here's, here's without applying the dust and scratches and here's with applying the dust and scratches. And you can already see that the noise is gone instantly. So you don't want these these colored spots in your image when you print it big or you're showing it for a presentation or something, you want to make sure that you have the best possible um, image quality that you can. And this is one of the ways to easily remove this noise and keep the detail in your rocks. So now that I've removed the noise from my foreground and I want to put in, I want to put in this sky with this image, I'll show you how to do that really fast. So I'm gonna take this layer away, and that leaves me with my long exposure foreground with no noise, and it leaves me with my nice sky that I have. So I could select either the sky or the, the foreground. I'm gonna go ahead and select the sky just because it's easier. And then you wanna make sure you select in here as well. And then once you have that selection, you wanna double click or right click and select inverse. And now you have your foreground selected. And then all you do is come over here to your panel and apply a layer mask. And it's that easy. So now we have, now we have the hot or the low ISO foreground in with the nice sky. And you can see the difference that this makes. If you look here, the detail in the rock, there's the single shot with the, the high noise, and there's the low ISO with no noise. So it makes a huge difference when you're gonna print. So that is how we do um, the confetti noise. And now I'm gonna show you stacking. So stacking is done by taking multiple images back to back to back of the same setting. The way that the algorithms work is if you have 16 images, you're going to get a four times noise reduction factor. If you have 25 images, you're going to get a five times. I found that going up to 36 is optimal. You can go beyond 36, but if you go beyond 36, then you have to go to 72 to get any noticeable difference. If you do 72 and you want to have a little bit better image, you have to go to 144 and on and on and on. So as the numbers get higher with the number of images that you take, your, your return diminishes a little bit. So I found that 36 images back to back to back is optimal for this program. Um, I'm gonna show you 25 just to make things easy. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a program on the Mac called Starry Landscape Stacker. Now, Starry Landscape Stacker is only available on the Macintosh, and there's another program that's very similar. It's called Sequator, and it's available on the Windows side. Sequator is free, 
um, Starry Landscape Stacker is approximately $40, I believe. So what we do is we have to select all JPEGs or TIFFs. The program does not work with raw files. So I've, I've selected all of these JPEGs here. There's 25 of them. And I'm gonna open them into the program. And what the program's doing now is it's reading this determine if the, the images are light frames or dark frames. You can use light frames and dark, plane, dark frames. Um, I have never had a need to use dark frames. So I use all light frames and the results will speak for themselves and I'll show you. I believe I'm gonna to have to change the settings as soon as it's done here though. Yeah, so it's telling me that some of these things are dark. So I'm just gonna change these to light frames really quick. The images were slightly dark when I shot them. So just do this real fast and the rest of the process is super quick. Okay, I have all light frames now. I'm going to click continue. And now what this is going to do is it's going to process all the, the 25 images. And the result that you're going to see is going to look like a star trail image. But what it's doing is it's just overlaying them all together, making sure that the foregrounds and all the exposures and everything are aligned. If you throw 25 images at this program, and let's say one of them was shot at 3200 ISO, and the other 24 were shot at 6400 ISO, the program will reject it because it, it everything, all the exposure values have to be the same. Okay, so now the program has overlaid all the images and it has put red dots where it thinks the sky is. So you can see these red dots. And then I don't see any red dots down in the ground because the idea of this is to separate the sky from the foreground. So I'm gonna click find sky and then the computer is going to, based on the red dots, it's going to say, okay, this is where we think the sky is. So it did a really good job. It did miss some up here, which is no big deal. We come over here where it says paint and we make sure the sky is checked. And I just bring my brush way up and then click and drag and finish painting in the sky. All right. Now, once I have all the sky selected, all I have to do is hit align and composite. If you, if you're doing, if you have a certain image that you want all the images to align with, like say the Milky Way was to the to the right or to the left, and that's the position you want it in because it does move during the exposure. But if you don't click align with, what it'll do is it'll just align all the images back to the middle image. So I'm just gonna click align and compose, and it's gonna take that center image and it's gonna move the sky, because it's created a mask for the sky, it's going to create, it's going to create a static image of the stars because it's going to align all the other images to the middle image. And when it does that, it's also going to apply a noise reduction to the entire image. And so that's what it's going to do. I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to go and I'm going to show you the difference. So these are the finished products. This is, this is the stacked image and this is the single image. So here's a single image, no noise reduction, no, nothing done to it. And there's the 25 stack, the single and the 25 stack. So you can see it makes a huge difference, especially up in the details of the Milky Way. Here's the, the with the noise reduction, there's without. And we zoom in a little bit more. So we're up at 300% now. There's with the noise reduction and there's without the noise reduction. So when it comes to printing these images large, this is a, a big role in getting the best quality print that you possibly can. Now, most of the time it wouldn't be noticeable on something like Instagram. Um, Facebook is actually high enough quality that you will see the noise in people's images, um, but not Instagram. But sometimes what happens is when you do your stacking, I want to show you this, and this is how we can apply two different methods. So we have a stacked image here, but you also see this some of this white noise. There's a little bit of white noise again. So what we'll do is we're just going to create a, a duplicate layer. 
and then we're going to go back to the pin light blending mode that we used in the previous image to remove the white noise from the shadow areas. So we go to filter, noise, median, and then you'll notice that the, and I always like to use my radius of three, I feel that works the best. And then we'll change the pin light or the blending mode to pin light. So now we have, I mean, it's not, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough that I want to take the time to do it to make sure that my prints are the best. So now there's no white noise. There's hardly any noise at all in this image. And now I would do my processing and get it ready for print. So that's how we do stacking. And if we want to do a side by side comparison, I'm happy to show you that. There we go. Now, when we zoom in, this is 100%, and you can see the huge difference that it makes. And you can easily tell which one you'd rather go to print with. Okay, so let's review. We went over pin light blending mode, we went over dust and scratches, and we went over stacking. The pin light blending mode is to remove the white noise from your shadow areas of your night images. The dust and scratches is used to, to remove the confetti noise from your single long exposures at night so that you get a good clean foreground. And the stacking is to remove noise from both the sky and the foreground together. I thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment box below and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.